Alrighty guys, we're back for the Boulder, and this deck is based around Mr. Orfeo the Boulder, which is a 4-drop with Jund colors up there. We got a 2-4 legendary creature, Rhino Warrior. Warrior, that's pretty cool, man. I almost made a Warrior version of this, but I landed on this deck instead. Anyways, that's besides the point whenever you attack double target creature's power until the end of turn, so that's pretty cool, right? But it also pairs really well with cards like Unnatural Growth, which at the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until the end of turn. So yeah, we kind of just packed the deck full of cards that will help us ramp into these, and then cards that work really well with them, right? Like Trample cards and stuff. So we're going to go over the rest of the deck, then hop into some normal play mode. But first things first, for anyone who does not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well. Additionally, we do got that sub goal set all the way up at 1,000, which I don't know if I have to say all the way up anymore because you guys are completely crushing that goal. So thank you so much. Holy cow. I mean, we are so close at this point. Ah, oh, man. So yeah, if you guys want to help us reach that goal, then please consider subscribing uh, because it is much appreciated, friends. All right, what do we got in the deck here? We got four Gallag Readers, two Prize Fights, and four Werewolf Pack Leaders. We got four Fable of the Mirror Breakers and four Jewel Thieves, as well as two Chariots, four Olvenwald Oddities, the three Mr. Orfeos. We got four Zeotora's Envoys and four Unnatural Growths as well. As a mana base that leans towards completely green, I believe, yes, ev everything in the mana base leans towards green, so that way we're not punished for the Unnatural Growth. But there's tons of ways to get treasure on the top end here, which we're actually going to go uh, over in a bit more depth. So Pack Leader is going to be really important because I think card draw is really important. But there's also that second ability where you can uh, potentially tap four, give it trample, all that fun stuff, right? So you could technically do that uh, before combat and make it a 5-3, and then it doubles to a 10 trample off of the unnatural growth, which is just disgusting. Like, if you don't have any other creatures and it's just pack, uh, pack leader, then you're still pretty happy about that, right? Cards like prize fight, you're not going to want to do too early unless you can get away with it, right? Like... Uh, you you kind of want to wait till you have your chunky creatures. You don't want to trade off of the prize fight. You want your creature to win and then get a potential swing and get that treasure ramp, right? So Gallag Readers pairs really well with like Chariot when those two cats enter. And then every other turn after that, if you're duplicating your cats, then Gallag Readers gets that little bit of recurring value and hopefully recurring ramp off of the tapped treasure token, right? So we opted for Gallag Readers for, for that recurring value, but also because, because it can get that counter, it just works better than like an innkeeper when we're doubling their attack and whatnot, right? So yeah, Gallag Readers instead of innkeeper. So the fable is in here mainly for the treasure, but I do think that there's going to be games where we end up just having our four drops and five drops and none of our ramp. And then sometimes that fable of the mirror breaker discard it is the hero of the day is <laughs> the real MVP, right? I, I can't tell you how many times those discards have come in handy. And then fable of the mirror breaker also works really well with Gallag readers, making sure we get that first goblin. Uh, and then of course the reflection later on. And then, I mean, let's talk about that reflection for a second. Being able to um, use the reflection of Kikijiki's ability on like an Alvinwald Oddity or a Zeotora is really powerful. So yeah, a spicy card in here. And then of course the Jewel Thief is really cool too. 3 drop 3-3, three, three, Vigilance, Trample, and then you get a treasure token. And I mean, could, could you ask for a better card for this uh, unnatural growth style deck, right? Because the Trample's super spicy. I feel like the Vigilance is going to be easy to forget because really it's only in here for the Trample, but let's not underestimate Vigilance, right? Okay, oh, I didn't necessarily go over why Zeotora's Envoy is in here, but it's pretty obvious. It's got that Trample, but that Blitz ability, letting you haste this in, is going to be pretty valuable. I think haste, like, in the recent months of Standard, I feel like haste has, like, just... It's become very, very important, right? Because there's so many instances where the opponent will just destroy everything all the time. 
and then you'll top deck a nice splicey haste creature and win the game anyways and that is very very possible in this deck especially if you already have unnatural growth available and you top deck an Alvinwald Oddity, now you're swinging in with a, a Trample Haste 8-8, eight, eight or more if you somehow have Boulder on the board too, or multiple Unnatural Growths for that matter. So yeah, the, the Haste off the Blitz is going to be really important. And then Zeotora's ability is very, very spicy too. Uh, often you'll be able to play whatever you hit off the top with uh, Zeotora's, Zeotora's Envoy. Sorry, this is not the actual Zeotora. This is uh, the Envoy. <laughs> Regardless, guys, let's go ahead and hop into some normal play mode and see how it goes. I was getting a little bit of lag in the menus there. Hopefully, hopefully we're good to go. Well, right into the first match. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. The deck might need more removal, but I don't know, man. We're just, we have a we have a smack face strategy, and I think that is a very fine strategy to have. Especially when it it sure feels like less and less people are playing creature decks. So I'll get this ready for a Jewel Thief, and it's 100% okay to play these out as forests. Or I should say play play these out on the uh, green mana side. <laughs> They're technically not forests. But we'll see. We're saving them for, for last, just in case. So Zeotora's Envoy also gets around cards like... Um, well, not Brutal Cathar, but like the Envoy being multicolored uh, could be super useful. I think a natural growth is fine over the chariot. So we'll go we'll play this on red since we have since we have so much uh, of uh, the green sources here. Oh, we do have 25 land in the deck, by the way. That's kind of important, I guess. Nice. Well, got to get some blockers out there. Gonna get some draw power off the uh, the the the, the Toski Toski, the bearer of secrets. Ooh, okay, Gallagreeters. I wish we could go Gallagreeters into Chariot. That's something else, man. If this was a uh, innkeeper, we could do that. So let's go. I think it's going to be Chariot, so we have blockers. What do you guys think? I think we get this down tapped, go Chariot. Yeah, because we're one mana short from playing both of those. And every turn, those cats are going to be 4-4 four, four or so. Those are good blockers, man. At this point, now that we've established the unnatural growth, really what we want to see is just all of our trample hasty. Uh, buddies, right? Like, that's really what we want to see here. Okay, so no removal is good for us. What is the opponent playing, man? I am so confused. <laughs> I like it, though. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll block there. We just don't, we don't know what's in hand, but I'm not too afraid. Yeah, they might as well attack, right? Okay, so pack leader is pretty good. Pack leader is definitely pretty good here. So we're going to go Gallag Readers into Pack Leader. And we're going to grab that counter on the Gallag Readers. And we will power up the Chariot off of Greeters and a Cat. Yep, looks good. We will swing with both of these. And then copy cat. And let's go... Do we need the treasure token? I don't think so. But I think I'm going to grab the treasure token anyways. I think that's fine. Oh, when the chariot's powered up, the who endures only cost one. That's actually interesting, isn't it? Okay, so they go ahead and chump. 
So that's why the trample's so important. Mm hmm Um, I will play this down on... I think it's completely safe to play this down on black. Man, I hope it's not going to be a meat hook soon. They don't have the double black for it, though. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. I have no clue what the opponent's playing. Have you guys seen this deck before? Like, I don't even know what to call it, <laughs> honestly. I, I really don't. Usually I have some kind of name for it. Destroy all creatures with mana value two or less. Wow. <laughs> we just got wrecked, bro. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is, that is absolute, like, they get to draw three cards here off the swing, too. They don't know what we have open in our hand, but don't worry, opponent. It's nothing you gotta worry about. Man, Path of Peril, that's a card. Are we gonna see that card played more often? I don't know. I, I don't know. We, we don't see it played against us, like, a whole lot. So that, that was just... <laughs> That was devastating, man. Yep, they get to take out the chariot if they want, but I think it's better to hit the unnatural growth here. Yeah, yeah. Um, So we could hit the binding, but I don't know. It's not like we get to counter that, so. A jewel thief. That's actually a, a decent draw here. Uh, if, if we still had all of our combo pieces, but like any amount of... I don't think the ramp's gonna do a lot. Yeah, any amount of extra blockers here, so we actually can lair for three, but I want to be able to lair for four just in case, so call me crazy. I'm gonna play this as a land. Yeah, I, I wanna be able to do that just in case. Man, uh, all that draw power that the opponent got last turn is probably a nail in the coffin. What do you, what do you guys think? We oh my goodness! Oh, we are just we are just like super dead. Yeah, they <laughs> they know what to swing with pretty easily here. Uh, let's just take the eight. We're gonna definitely let the opponent play this out uh, because we're we're like dead next turn. So. This is crazy, man. Like a, a Toski deck. They might even... It might even be worth having uh, more Path of Perils in the deck, too. So they, they might very well have more. Um, so we're going to go no attacks, end turn. Yeah, we got no cards to play, so it was a, it was a nighttime regardless. Giving Toski Death Touch is huge. That's so cool, man. I don't know what the opponent's playing, but I love it. <laughs> it's a cool one. The Luminarch, naturally. Okay, yep, yep. Blood Chief's Thirst. Go for it. My goodness. Oh, GG, by the way, opponent. That was... That was... <laughs> that Path of Peril. It was almost anybody's game. It was almost. Power up. The lair. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. <laughs> Your death touch can't kill me, opponent. I mean, te technically it can, but we don't talk about it. <laughs> oh, man. Toski, man. That's a card we don't see often because of Meat Hook. It's got to be, right? Like, that that has to be the reason, because Bearer of Secrets is actually really, really spicy. It's got to be because we see Meat Hook in every other game. So I wonder if they were actually running any Meat Hooks in the deck, because Path of Peril, at least the, the base ability, does get around. Like, it, it does let you keep your own uh, Toski there. I don't know. Yeah, that was cool, man. That was a different deck that we have not seen before. What you got for me, opponent? You got something fun like that? We'll see. Hey, we got the boulder. Let's go. 
The boulder is in hand. The boulder is conflicted. Sorry, guys. Do you, do you know what that's from? Uh, you get you get some uh, you get some red cat points if you know where that's from. Uh, okay, we'll drop the Gallagreeters and hope that it doesn't just get pinged to death by <laughs> yeah, like a spike field hazard or something. <laughs> oh man. A thrilling discovery. Okay, so this is potentially a yeah, floor hold reanimator. Oh no. Oh dear. So I like Jewel Thief here because we could. Well, we have. Yeah. Do we ramp or do we go. I think we go counters for a bigger swing now because it looks like we're gonna have to get as aggressive as possible here. This is going to be fun, though. We're going to get the boulder down. Another thrilling discovery. Okay. Very scary stuff on the opponent's side. They de they definitely have their land drop, right? Maybe not. Maybe they're looking for their land, and they're like, Oh, crap, we didn't draw one. That would be really unlucky, though. There it is. Okay, yeah. Oh, strangle. Yep, yep. Get rid of the Gallic readers. Okay, oh, uh, Zia, wow, Zia Tor is really good here too. Um, let's just hope that the boulder survives for a turn. And we're gonna get a six swing because what's gonna happen here is they only have four mana. So what's gonna happen is, First of all, I hope that they can't bring the lore hold from the grave. Okay, so no double white, so it's not Wandering Emperor. We can play this out on black. Here we go. Here we go. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it hits. Here we go. I'm scared. It's not enough to kill the opponent, but it's a huge, huge swing. Brings them down to one, potentially. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that feels good, man. You see that boulder swing, guys? Let's go. Let's see what we hit off the top. Oh, it was a big score. Another lore, lore hold to the grave. Unnatural growth for free off of the Envoy. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, so we need haste. We need haste. Like, there's just no way that lore hold's not hitting the table this turn. We We need trample haste easily. Because it's going to be like, it's going to be lore hold uh, up to a 9-9, nine, nine, and then it's going to be like the board wipe or whatever. Uh, oh, yeah, because of unnatural growth, their board wipe doesn't hit it properly. Unless it's like um, a shadow's verdict or whatever it's called. That could do it. It's going to say because it could be uh, burn down the house. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> oh. That is so good. That is so powerful. Well, we don't have the haste. Prize fight's pretty, pretty good here. How do we do this, guys? How do we do this? We need to... We need to... So, Lore Hold's indestructible off of the call, because that's until the next turn. How do we get around this? <laughs> I don't think we do. I, I literally, I don't think we get around this, do we? Because we're going to double this twice. We need to kill one of these first. So let's get this down. Uh, 5-3 trample. It isn't human. So yeah, it's not haste. This isn't haste. It's prize fight. So we go next. And then we go full swing double jewel thief and then we go you and it's going to be you fight you get rid of one of the angels right and then they oh wait yeah it comes down to what's in their hand gg opponent <laughs> gg man i was i was sitting there like oh man they get to block this like no matter what but yeah no look at the trample on the jewel thief it really came down to the two mana they had open, was it going to be some form of uh, removal? 
Let's go, guys. A great second game that I kind of wish was the first game because it really showcased exactly what we were going for with the deck. <laughs> oh, man, that was a fun one. That's one of the reasons we play normal play mode, too, though, because, like, wh when are you going to see a c these cool decks that the opponents are playing in ranked, right? It's going to be... It's going to be every other match is a, a control deck with four meat hooks, and and then every third match is some Naya runes. <laughs> uh, although I haven't been seeing as many runes recently. Okay, so this is actually kind of a bad hand, but we have plenty of land. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. I'm I'm calling it a bad hand because we have no guaranteed third land which could be really really bad right like if this was innkeeper then uh oh pinging our uh, fable there nice so we got the third land i think it's still going to be galagreeters though we're gonna try to get some treasures off of this anyways yeah innkeeper would have been at least maybe a guarantee because you get the treasure before the opponent can remove it I really like Werewolf Pack Leader here, but I like the ramp off the Jewel Thief more. And something tells me that we're going to have to discard more next turn too, so... Let's get this down on black, because... Get two treasures off of that. Exactly. I think this is safe. The tapped treasure token here. Yeah, something tells me we're going to have to discard here, guys. Not, not going to lie. We don't get a swing because we got greedy with the treasure, but I think the treasure is going to be important. Darn it. Okay, darn it. Yeah, we, our cards are gone. They still have four cards in hand. That's scary, man. That's very scary. Um, so we have nothing else. I'm going to save the treasure still. We're going to lair for two. Remember, uh, remember that decayed zombies can't block. So we do get a good swing there. We don't want to lose Gallagreeters. Uh, if they don't have removal for it, Gallagreeters is just a, a constant pain um, for for uh, for them, right? So. Honestly, I wouldn't mind... I don't know. I don't know. Any any draw here would be good. Like, anything other than a land, really. Crap. <laughs> we could cycle. We could. We could definitely cycle here. On their turn? No, anything that we keep in our hand is going to be discarded. I'm going to play it. I'm going to see if they double block into the Jewel Thief here first, because they don't know what's in our hand. Like, we, this could be a combat trick that just completely gets rid of their board. I think, I think they take the three here. Okay, they actually, they actually go for the kill. Crap. Well, that, that plan didn't work, did it? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, maybe they, maybe they take a treasure here instead. They do not. They do not take a treasure here instead. Okay. That's okay. I'm fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> really hope we don't get a land uh, next turn, though, for sure. Man, I'm still thinking about that game one path of peril. Oh, my goodness. The absolute slaughter that that caused. Okay, they pass it to me, and a hey, Zeotora's Envoy is a huge draw. Now, the, the real question here is, do we want it as a creature, or do we blitz this out? Uh, the thing is, if we don't blitz it, what are the odds that they, they, they might have something to kill it next turn, right? So, I think it's blitz, especially since we get a card draw off of the blitz as well. And potentially a free card here too. It's so like I said, those those haste those hasty cards are gonna be very important. 
Let's see what we draw here. Gallagher eaters. Can't play it because it's the end of our turn, but that that's something at least. Yeah, we don't want to forget that Lair is open for a large amount here. Um, for six. Lair for six if we tap everything in the treasures. GG opponent! GG, buddy! So they were playing a, a casual discard deck, which I've never really gotten a chance to, to play. I really want to one day, but if I if I go discard, I'll probably go like Racto, Rakdos uh, discard or something like that, right? This deck's really fun so far, guys. It's exactly what you would expect. <laughs> exactly what you would expect. Maybe a little janky here and there on like the draws, but also you, you never know. Like you got to play a deck so much to know when something is luck and when something is just how the deck is, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Pretty good lineup here. We might even go Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Uh, over Jewel Thief, but I, I mean, honestly, I doubt it, but we'll see. Play this on green. Get the pack leader down, and my heater just turned on. I gotta turn that off real quick. Okay. So what we got over here, opponent? What 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 are you rocking? GG, buddy. I'll tell you what, that pack leader sure did look threatening. I don't know. I don't know what caused them to stop there. I feel like we both had a pretty good start. The opponent was going first too, so maybe they didn't draw a land. Oh well, I'll take the victory. I will gladly take the weekly slash daily win, right? <laughs> Although we had a great setup, I really would have liked uh, to play that one out, honestly. We, we had a pretty decent hand for sure. Alright, opponent, what you bring into the table? Ooh, see this is what I was talking about when I was going over the deck, why Fable of the Mirror Breakers discard could be important. I think I mentioned that. We'll try it, we'll try it. This is a pretty slow hand, but I mean... Let's give it a shot. Yep, Chariot doesn't make it any faster, that's for sure. Okay, normal forest. <laughs> Opponent potentially playing some, uh, some control over here. Now I really wish we would have had a faster start, but that's okay. They do the indulgence on their turn, telling me that they might not have a third land drop here. Well, they discarded a land, so... Maybe that was the case? I, I don't know. I have no idea why they would discard a land if that if that is the case, right? The Jewel Thief is pretty spicy. We're actually going to go Who Endures, because I don't know if we're going to have to play this out on black. So, Who Endures mainly for that unnatural growth when it comes time. Which might be next turn. Might be. We'll see. The opponent has four mana. Okay, Fable. <laughs> Fable of the Beer Breaker. We got another forest. We can safely play this out on black, I'd say. And let's do this, man. Let's do this. We won't have a red source for the Mr. Orfeo, though. I still think ramping into the unnatural growth is just more valuable, especially when we have Alvinwald. Right? I, yeah, I just, I feel like that's just more valuable. Unless the opponent invokes despair. Okay, we need to we need to talk about that for a second because yeah, invoke despair could literally destroy us right now. Like the unnatural growth would go uh, bye bye. The jewel thief is gone. Opponent, 
<laughs> you monster. Okay, well, they probably have three more Invoke Despairs in the deck. Hey, we drew another unnatural growth. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay, we have options because here's here's the thing. If we go Jewel Thief, we could set up for eventually uh, the red source for the boulder. But if we go unnatural growth, yeah, it's, a, it's great for setting up our hasty tramples. But what if they just invoke despair again on their turn, right? Because they probably do have three more in the deck. So it's something like a chariot where we sacrifice a cat, but we'll still have the chariot down then might just be better. We can't play around. We can't play around Invoke Despair forever, but that's my thought process behind the chariot. Um, I, I hope that was a, a decent play, right? Yeah, like we could go greedy, get that na unnatural growth down, and then and then hope to start swinging in with our hasty Alvinwald. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about that, honestly. So we're just going to take the two. Uh, a strangle is a thing in opponent's deck probably and, and other cards like that. A braid would be a good one for the opponent's deck because that could hit chariot too. Well, yeah, if they have a braid, they probably just want to take out the chariot anyways. Like they don't want this to survive. So I don't know. That makes sense to me though. We don't want it to get gobbled up by a simple play with fire. Prismari Command, yeah, that'll that'll do it. Opponent having uh, all the cards necessary to really pick this deck apart right now. Oh man, Prismari Command seems really good right now, doesn't it? I really don't want to go on natural growth here, but they have four open mana. Like, as soon as we play this, it's going to be the second Invoke Despair, right? Like, that's just, that's probably how it is. Hasting Alvinwald, I'd rather be like a trick to end the game. So let's do this, man. Let's get that treasure. This turn would have been really, really good uh, if we were allowed keeping our chariot for a turn. Do they trade here? No. I'm going to be able to slip that two damage through, I think. Nice. Nice. Very, very nice. This is anyone's game, technically, but we'll see. We'll see. The so, uh, Infernal Grasp. Yep, that could take care of the boulder, too, and the Oddity, for that matter. It's getting to the point where the opponent has enough mana to really just... Okay, so there's the second Invoke Despair. Oh, man. Invoke Despair really, really picks certain decks apart doesn't it and then not only that things like the uh prismari command being able to hit so much right now that's scary man scary grixis over there <laughs> i still think it's anyone's game i i did not lose all hope here oh no opponents like what was that what was that? You say you didn't lose hope yet? Here, have a couple planeswalkers that you have to deal with. <laughs> Let's not discard. Let's just decline, take the two. It, it is what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's just, it is what it is. We're just going to take the damage and see what we draw. A proving ground. Well, we get to take out one of the obs with the oddity. And that and that's it. One, two, three mana, and this comes out tapped, so we can't do boulder two. Um, imagine if we still had a uh, unnatural growth on the board already, right? Like all the damage potential that we could have. So one, two, three. Yep, yeah, just one mana short. One mana short. So we'll go ahead and get Alvinwald Oddity down. Or one untapped mana, I should say. We'll swing at the uh, Obnixilis and say a GG, and then we'll let him play this out too. In case they have the quest where they have to attack or play cards. 
because I do know what it's like to run out of time. Burn down the house. Dang. Decline. GG. GG opponent. <laughs> These matches have been really fun though. Like there's been a lot of like, I don't know. There's a lot of potential. A lot of potential for like these uh, double attack powers and stuff. Um, honestly, I want to play one more with it, but if it's a long one, I'm just gonna outright give it to the opponent. So I'm gonna warn you guys right now. If it if it ends up being uh, not a fast one by any means, then I'm just gonna back out uh, and and go over the deck uh, one more time, right? Okay, we go first. I like this hand. It's slow, but we have tons of land. Tons of potential here. Even a turn for uh, Zeotora's haste. A uh, Zeotora's envoy haste, right? Off of the treasure with the jewel thief. So that could be fun. Mm -hmm. A naturalist. Oh, okay. This is going to be a fast one then. So I am going to play this on red. As you guys saw last game, the uh, Mr. Or Orfeo. Was I saying Orfeo? Orfeo. Well, now they both sound right. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. How would you guys pronounce it? Uh-oh. They already have the, uh, the combo. Well, <laughs> that's why people are still playing runes. Uh, let's hope that they don't do too much here on their turn. Because, boy, do we have spicy cards in hand. Looking for that haste, right? Probably got it. Yeah. They they so that oh no. They probably got more runes if they're if they're just plugging it all into Rune Forge instead of Naturalist. Yeah. Yeah, that's very, very scary. Mm-hmm. We're gonna take the four. Can we keep this back as a blocker for some reason. Oh, oh, oh we, we guys. I gotta be real with you, I'm not used to having blockers available. Um, I know that's not an excuse, but <laughs> it's a little bit funny. We're gonna go for the greed because we could die next turn easily. A prize fight here still wouldn't get us, well, a prize fight would help us take care of the naturalist, I guess. Whenever you attack double target creatures power, so like six just isn't gonna do it. We're, we're going to go for Ultra Greed. Because we could easily, easily die next turn. Yeah, don't forget the Vigilance on that, too. Come on, give us a 5 drop. Come on, buddy. Let it go through, give us a 5. Actually, if you want to block that, that would be pretty good, too, actually. Getting rid of that Naturalist might actually just be better than hitting a 5 drop off the top. <laughs> They're thinking about it. Okay. They might they might have another naturalist in hand. Back up to 20. Aw, oh, it was just a land. Let's see what we draw here off the uh, envoy though. <gasps> Bro, one card away. Oh, oh, we couldn't have played it anyways. They blocked with the naturalist, which was actually really smart because yeah, we were one card away. <laughs> Dude, that would have been insane. Could you imagine if they took that and we got a free unnatural growth and then we could start swinging in with our other envoys and stuff? Let's just take the eight. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like I said, like we're like, <laughs> it's not looking great for us. Um, Who endures? Could get rid of the reign of truth here, but Unnatural growth could make it so that way Jewel Thief blocks really well next turn. This goes up to eight though. We'll, we'll have to, it has trample is the thing. I don't know guys. I, I don't even know what the best course of action here would be. It might just be the Jewel Thief and the Who Endures. To take out the Reign of Truth so we could at least double block the champion. What do you what do you guys think? What would you do here? I feel like there's a lot of plays 
a lot of optional plays. Like, we could even take out... See, I don't think Rune of Sustenance would be the one, though. Or we could take out Rune of Might to get rid of the Trample, but we know that they probably have more. At the beginning of each end step, if an enchantment was put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn... Yeah, we don't want them to get Kami of Transients back. Because this was put into the grave. Okay, so they did have another naturalist in hand. Runes, how could you do this to me, runes? How? I can't believe you've done this. It was that early combo too, man. Getting that combo so early is so valuable. Wow, showdown of the scalds here. We might have another turn. Oh no, no we don't. They can play the they can play all these for free. The rune of mites and stuff. And they got mana from there too, so. Yeah. GG opponent. I I do wonder if we just got greedy on our turn with the Zeatora's Envoy instead, right? What do you guys think? I'm thinking like how fast we ran out of time, and this is this is one of the reasons why removal is so important. So maybe going up a prize fight or finding another a form of removal for the deck. May maybe? I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like a lot of these matches today had a lot of like um had a lot of things where we take lethal damage no matter what, right? I believe so. I believe so. They still had something open there. Wow. Maybe like a, I don't know if they run Snakeskin Veil, but they might. They might. <laughs> GG. Let's go check out the deck real quick. There were a lot of instances where it's just like, oh, if we just like, if it went in this order or, oh, if the opponent didn't do this, right? So it's like one of those things where if this was in ranked, yeah, that might be a bit more annoying <laughs> than you would, uh, than you would like to have. Uh, right, like uh, more of an annoyance than you would like to have while playing a game. And so in normal play mode, it doesn't really matter. You're just kind of there to have fun. And that's definitely where this deck belongs, right? Something you could do to push it to a bit of a less janky stance is actually, unfortunately, go down the boulders, right? Because overall, a natural growth is just a better version of boulder. But you could still keep one in the deck because we did see it win us that one game where um, uh, the Boulder and Jewel Thief uh, with, comboed with Unnatural Growth and actually won that game, which was the whole point of the deck, which was really, really nice, right? But I do think overall it's a little bit too slow. We got a lot of uh, four drops in here. Something that maybe, I don't know. This is a tough one because I think I might drop the Chariots and add some one drops and then yeah go down like two uh boulders for more one drops too maybe even more ramp um right what what is the uh what what are the cards a uh, pack leader could be good in here too even though it doesn't have trample we have tons of four and five drops so being able to get those extra counters as well as just being like an extra card that you play to get benefits off of the gala greeters but then also, yep, yep, uh, the Sentinel. That might be good here too. But then another issue we had was, yeah, when we're up against creature decks, you do actually want to see that removal. But not necessarily. I think runes kind of popped off in that last match. Whereas uh, other creature decks and stuff might struggle to actually deal with the high power and high toughness of the creatures in the deck, right? I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below what you thought. I thought this one was pretty darn fun, though. And uh, hey, if you made it this far into the video, y'all are champions, and I super duper appreciate you. And I will see you in the next video.